I think most of you have heard of the legendary story of Orson Welles' famous 1938 War of the Worlds radio broadcast. The story goes that it caused mass panic because many listeners thought it was a real news report about an alien invasion. While this story is a little bit exaggerated, it is stuck in the public consciousness even to this day. But what if I told you this wasn't the first time something like this had happened? This is the story of how a new British radio broadcasting company unintentionally caused panic throughout England. That company was the BBC. Let's go back 12 years before the War of the Worlds broadcast to 1926 in London, where a new British radio station called the BBC had been in operation for four years. At this point, it was still a privately owned company rather than the state-owned institution it is today. Radio was still very new at this point, and there weren't many shows outside of music programs. One man, an eccentric Catholic priest named Father Ronald Knox, decided to plan an elaborate fake news broadcast for a 17-minute parody program, an idea thought unlikely to cause panic. On January 16, 1926, at 7.40pm, Father Knox put his script into action under the program title Broadcasting the Barricades. The broadcast began by interrupting a real academic lecture, something that immediately added some realism. But, just like in the War of the Worlds broadcast 12 years later, an announcement was made at the beginning of the program informing the listener that what they were about to hear was not a genuine news report. Knox, in a parody of actual BBC contributors, goes on to report a massive riot that was happening in London. Complete with realistic sound effects, he says that Big Ben has been set ablaze and eventually comes crashing down. The riots turn even deadlier, as one Theophilus Gooch is reportedly being roasted alive in Trafalgar Square, and a Mr. Wotherspoon, the Minister of Traffic, has been hanged from a lamppost. Knox also pretended to receive news reports frequently, as you would expect in a chaotic situation such as this. And to add even more realism, the program occasionally fluttered back and forth with a genuine live broadcast of the Savoy Hotel's house band playing music. Then, an explosion sounded, and the signal went permanently back to the fake news report, with Knox proclaiming that the Savoy Hotel has been blown up by the rioters. The climax of the broadcast was when Knox reported that the rioters were just outside the BBC office, and then the program cut to music playing. Listeners believing that the broadcast was real would have thought that London was being destroyed, and their faithful radio announcer was currently being murdered by a riotous crowd. While we don't have the original broadcast, we do have the original script, and with just that, it's not easy to see how this report could have been construed as real news. With names like Mr. Popplebury, the secretary of the National Movement for Abolishing Theater Cues, it should have been obvious that it was a parody. But with radio still a medium in its infancy, we have to put ourselves in the shoes of the listeners. Radio reports were sent in real time. That meant that they could distribute news much faster than newspapers. And additionally, news sources then were generally trusted, and things like sound effects were still novelties at that time, and a trusted news source couldn't possibly use fake sounds, right? So it must have been real. And most importantly, the BBC had a monopoly in broadcasting in the UK at that time. But just like Orson Welles' famous broadcast, perhaps the main reason people believed it was real was simply because they tuned in after the disclaimer had been made at the beginning of the program. As for listeners not noticing the obvious elements of comedy, that's simply due to gullibility. They had been caught unaware by this form of parody that was far ahead of its time. Also, the historical context of the time period also played a part. Workers' riots were a real threat at the time, especially since only about four months after this broadcast, a dramatic general strike was conducted in London. And while this relevant issue was an essential part of the joke, it also played into people's fears. Father Knox was probably quite shocked to learn that his comedy program had caused panic outside of London, where people couldn't see with their own eyes that the city was completely fine. Concerned people phoned into the station, one angry man saying that his wife, who had a weak heart, had fainted because of it. Only about an hour after the program had finished, the BBC had to issue a public apology for the incident, saying, 
Some listeners, who apparently only heard part of Father Knox's talk at 7.40 this evening, did not realize the humorous innuendos underlying the imaginary news items, and have felt uneasy as to the fate of London, Big Ben, and other places mentioned in the talk. The preliminary announcement stated that the talk was a skit on broadcasting, and the whole talk was, of course, a burlesque. We hope that any listeners who did not realize it will accept our sincere apologies for any uneasiness caused. London is safe, Big Ben is still chiming, and all is well. While the program certainly received backlash, one BBC head counted 2,307 positive reviews and only 249 criticisms in the press within a month after the controversial broadcast. So it seemed that mostly only average, gullible people were negatively affected by the fake news report. In another humorous anecdote, the New York Times wrote about the incident in an article titled we are safe from such jesting, saying, Large numbers of people were filled with anxiety, such a thing as could not happen in this country. It is believed that Orson Welles was influenced, at least somewhat, by Father Knox's report when he also sparked controversy 12 years later. So that's the short story of the first major hoax in radio, even though it was unintentional. And for this humorous little event in history, we can thank one clever priest. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope this sparks more interest in Father Ronald Knox. He was certainly an interesting and eccentric character. Recently, I've been trying to make more videos about events outside of America, and this was one of them. And there will definitely be more to come. Well, that's all for now, all you sheiks and gals out there, but stay tuned for more Tales from the Jazz Age. <laughs>